everyone. Today we're going to be doing something super exciting. We're going to be talking about our top five anticipated games that we discovered at Origins. Um, so most of these, not most, all of them, um, this is before they're even released, we were able to either demo. Not quite, but yeah, or close. We either got to demo or play them or... Um, you know, learn about them from the different vendors. So mm -hmm. we're super excited to share them about. Um, I have a list of five and Randy has a list of five. Um, he, we're not going to guess who overlaps because he knows my list. <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go with zero. Uh, you know what? I, I think it's a safe bet. No. Pretty I, safe. Is it? Well, of course you know. Um, but anyway, so we're super excited to share about that. Um, so let's get into it. Oh, before we do, though, don't forget to subscribe button and the notification bell because subscribing is super cool because we talk about board games and about different conventions and the new games coming out. Um, it really depends on what you're subscribing to, how cool it is. I mean, well, us. If yeah, you subscribe to us. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of yeah. things that would not be cool to subscribe to, but this one would be a good idea. Yeah, I think so, because it's free. You just mm -hmm. click the button. All right, um, so number five, drum roll, you get to go first. Oh, I'm going first. Then. Yes, because you All already right. know well, mine, so. Number five, this was a huge surprise. We were walking down the, the hall, and this game caught our eye. And we were, we were amazed because this was a prototype. It was not even the game. It was just, I mean, it was the game, obviously, but it was a complete prototype. But in the prototype, if I were ranking quality of components, it would have ranked high just from the prototype. I mean, the, the boards were inlaid, but they were handmade inlaid, but they were engraved with... You the, could tell the there text. was a lot of love. There was a lot of woodworking, and all the woodworking was stamped as if it had been uh, screen printed. Mm -hmm. the, the boards were actually uh, basically the neoprene mats and had all the final art on them, it, it looked like it was ready to go into production with just a few minor enhancements and the missing art. Because yeah. the art box was white. And that game and the cards, was yeah. Scourge of the High Seas by Outland Entertainment. It's slated as a 2022 release. From what I saw, I don't think it's going to it's a 2020 Yeah, Kickstarter. it's a Kickstarter, I agree. But in Board Game Geek, it's listed oh, as no, 2022 no, no, no. that's not going to happen. Uh, it's going to hit Kickstarter Yeah, it's going to hit Kickstarter in 2022. Uh, I, I will say... You could tell there was a lot of love yeah. um, with the components and all the work he put into it. Because sometimes you get all the prototypes that were, mm -hmm. well, you could tell this yeah. was done by an artist. Like, yeah. I, I really do think there is an artist strict in them. The, so I'm the designer excited. works in laser engraving, and the first player marker was about a four-inch diameter compass that looked intricately carved it was beautiful well let's talk about a little about the gameplay so obviously we're we're peace knobs we we know this we accept this um but gameplay wise it is a pirate game you're going after well so of course you're gonna you could attack other pirates right and so they're gold but there are merchant ships um that go around but there's also every time you are successfully attack something navy ships come out and if you don't um, combat the Navy ships, then they start overtaking you and then they're everywhere. And then, then the man of war comes out and he super and um, bad things happen bad and, things and you happen. get bounties. So they go after you because you've accumulated a bounty. Of yeah. Spend. Whenever you, you collect money, you also get money in your pool of bounties. And the good news is if you manage to end the game with that money in the bounty, that's victory points towards you at the end of the game. Yeah. So it was a super cool concept. Yeah. So we didn't actually get to play. We just got to kind of hear about it and explain. But um, I, I'm actually pretty excited for a um, pirate-themed game. Well, you can't be. It's on my list. Well, whatever. Um, but it is heavy on attack. We'll we'll be able to see it, but it's a pirate game. That's what it's supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I agree with you. This one is pretty exciting, but it is on your list. Yep. Can't, you can't be excited. All right. My number five is, um, trailblazers. So we did get to play that. We did get to play a full game. Um, and basically, um, it's taking, um, pipeline and curious cargo, the putting pipes together, except this one's trails. Um, and it's, it's a lot lighter. Um, but it's still, it seems like a lot of fun and I'm just excited to share with it to some of my family members to get that Tetris 
it's by Ryan Courtney, and we got to meet him. He was like on the next booth over uh, promoting his new product that with the company he's with, but he had his game that he was releasing on his own in it being promoted outside of his booth. Yeah, and I did think they had a really cool, um, I guess, interaction promotional for, for, yeah. promotional thing. Is is they had a big. Um, blank slate and they had stickers and you got to the, you know, everyone got to place one sticker. And so we built this huge thing. I thought that was actually pretty cool. That was a pretty cool, um, marketing tool that I could appreciate. Um, Bytewing Games, that's who's making it. Yeah. Okay. So what's your number four, Mr. Randy? My number four, uh, this, I got to meet with Wise Wizard Games and this was uh, a really cool opportunity. I got to hear about their upcoming slate. We'll talk about that more in another video. But their big title that they've got coming out, it's going to kickstart in July, uh, is a precursor to Star Realms. It's Star Realms Rise of Empire. And this game is a one-on-one -on -one game, much like the other ones are really best at. Uh, but in this case, you're only playing as the Star Empire or the Trade Empire because the other, the Blob and the Machine Empires, don't exist yet. So this is a precursor, and it's a, basically a, like a legacy game because you get the cards you get can be upgraded with stickers when you claim them. So there's three kind of neutral uh, factions that you can accumulate cards from that give you lesser powers, but you can upgrade them into your Star Empire or the Trade Empire, depending on which team you're playing. And, you know, like me, I don't like stickers, so whenever they were telling me about this, it kind of pushed me away a little bit. But then he reeled me back in because they're going to release a pack with all of the combinations of those cards as cards. So for the people who don't like stickers, like me, you can substitute the cards out. So that was really sweet because basically if you put stickers on, you're pretty much relegated that you have to have sleeving for everything. So with the cards, you don't have to sleeve. You just substitute the card but out. But you're not going to sleeve it anyway. Uh, <laughs> Probably, but that's beside the point. But yeah, I'm super excited. Rob's super excited. This is one he was most excited about when we told him about it. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, my number four is okay. This one's a little bit for sissy. Is Turtle Splash. So um, we uh, we were over at Lucky uh, Lucky Duck's booth, um, and we were able to talk to um, a few people. And I am super excited because it is a dexterity game with a little bit of memory. And I thought it was super cute and very, very fun. Um, and I, th I think Sarah's going to absolutely love it. Now, I know Randy's never going to put a kid game on his, so I figured I'd take one for the team and get probably the best kids Besides, game. Besides, you were real more excited about her because you saw those animals and you fell in Dude, love. Dude, it was so cute. It was the, so cute. The art was very cute. Oh, and, my gosh. and it's about it's, a turtle, so. It, well... There's that. So, no, um, Turtle's my favorite animal, if you guys didn't know already. Um, so, absolutely, I was super excited about that. So, that one's uh, that one's for Sarah. So, um, what's your number three? My number three, this is one you showed me. Uh, I'm still, even though it's on this high on the list, I'm on the fence about it, but I have to put it on here because I ordered it as soon as we got done with the convention. Yeah. And that is Earth. Uh, this one was a Kickstarter. I actually had it. I saw it on Kickstarter. After I saw it, what, the components, I recognized it. And I had this, it is a, a watch. And I kind of was at a point where I was thought I was too many Kickstarters in at that point. So <laughs> I cut off my uh, myself and didn't end up backing it. But then after we went to the convention, they said it, it was basically a cross between Terraforming Mars and Wingspan. So they had me with Terraforming Mars. They lost me a little bit with Wingspan. Not, yeah, not. But then they explained the game, yeah. and it hit all my boxes. So it yeah. was I, I wasn't going to complain that this yeah. was on his the list. Ar the <laughs> art looks a lot like Ark Nova as far as it's just pictures of animals that mm -hmm. kind of look like the generic snapshots. Well, not animals, but also flowers. Because yeah. he specifically called out that um, his wife was a lover of plants, and so... Now he's starting to learn way more about plants than he ever wanted to because his wife would quiz him based on these pictures. Um, so that was pretty, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, yeah, but the cards are two-sided, so you can choose which way you want to play them, which I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing that one come out. I think that's supposed to be a 2023 release. Well, no, the, so it's already, the Kickstarter's been fulfilled. Yes. So it is, um, should be, 
be released by the end of this year, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it might. It's going to be late this year, but I always give the benefit of the doubt with Kickstarter. That's true. So it, that's it, true. It, it's listed it's, as a Q4 2022 release. Mm -hmm. I am always reluctant to believe it until I see it. Yeah. Uh, I, we'll, we'll see, because they talked about... Anyway, um, but yeah, so super excited to see that one. Um, my number three is um, the um, sequel to Creature Conference called Maple Valley. So this one, where Creature Conference is very much a worker placement, this one's um, a movement management resource gathering um, sequel, right? With the same artists and everything else like that. Um, same iconography, same cute characters, same kind of, um, the cards so are very we similar. We have more card play, I think, in this one. Yeah, there's a lot of card play in it as well. Um, so overall, I'm just super excited because Creature Conference was quite a surprise on how, one, for a light worker placement, how wonderful that one was. Well, the production value, that was outstanding. Yes, absolutely. And they said they're going to do very something similar with Maple Valley. Um, and, and so I'm super excited to see what they come up with for that one. Um, I love the artwork on that one. Um, so again, super excited. What about your number two? Well, number two, this would be another one that we saw it and immediately tried to track it down after the convention. Uh, that this one actually is out. So that, you know, technically it's, or at least it's, if it's not out, it's on pre-order to be out. And that is Legacies. Oh yes, that yes. one, that one, that so one, that one. We stopped by a booth that wasn't even a vendor. You know, they were a vendor. What? They weren't selling anything. It, it was, was a game manufacturer. Yeah, game manufacturing company. But they had listed, shown like displays of all the games, and they did games for Chip Theory games. So they had some. They had a bunch of high quality games that, on display, and in the centerpiece of all those games was Legacies. And I honestly. It just looked like my kind of yeah. game. It it's, had the it was gold and the. Oh, it, was just, it was supposedly a Kickstarter, but when I went to Kickstarter I, to try to track it down, maybe it I on, could not maybe find it. Maybe it was on GameFound? It says Kickstarter on the videos that are posted. Maybe so, it never. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't find it though. So I did find the, the company that releases it and I pre ordered it because it was the only place you could get it from them. I don't know how long it's going to take to ship, if it's actually out or if it's. Uh, you know, a, a pre-order that's coming. But so I didn't give an estimated delivery date? Not yet. It said it would let, notify me when it ships. Oh. So, but it, it says, you know, to purchase now. It didn't say, you know, well, pre-order. If you know any more than we do, let us know. But yeah, I mean, it oh. looked like right up our alley as far as the type of games. You're playing it kind of advancing over time throughout history for 300 years of history and doing technology upgrades and, and mm -hmm. has gold bars for metal for uh, the money in it, which just hits everything for me. Yeah, um, so my number two, um, we've kind of already talked about it before um, in another video, but still super excited because we got to see it for reals um, at the convention and that is Distilled. So I think you actually got a dis yes, you got a t-shirt. Um, and they were super nice. It was oh, super, yeah. it was the, wonderful. The designer was there and he was awesome. Yeah, um, absolutely loved uh, talking with them. I got so, my picture with me. I'll I know. Right here. <laughs> so no, it was so wonderful. And we, and we ended up coming back because Brandy did the first meet and greet and then I went back. Um, That's why I got the t-shirt. Yeah, because I was just in, you know, we were like, oh, hey, I want to look at this because this is the one I'm excited about because um, I love. Did you get a t-shirt? You know what? I got a shot glass too. Did you get one of those? I'm not talking to him right now. All right. So, but no, I'm super excited about it. Um, cause that one from the beginning just looks freaking amazing. Um, so what is your number one, Randy? I'm pretty sure everyone out in video land knows exactly what my number one ooh, is. Ooh, ooh, can I guess? Can well, I guess? you're not in video land, but go ahead. Uh, 44 BCE because that you have nonstop talked about right. this game. So, Gray Forest Games, uh, so, uh Kickstarter is still live right now. Go check it out. Uh, they were on our channel for a video, and uh, I got to demo the game sort of. They didn't have enough players at the time because, like, I drove, walked by there, did drive bys like five times, and every time the table was filled and I couldn't get in. And until I, Sunday morning. Until Sunday morning, and I went over there, and there was nobody there. And uh, even uh, Christian Gray was not there. His son was there, and his son taught me, and his wife was there. And his son taught me how to play, but we didn't have enough players to actually play it. 
but we kind of stepped through some turns, so I got an idea of how it plays, and I'm still as stoked, if not more stoked, than I was before. So it's it's good. Check it out. Yeah, another. Um, they were super nice. Another yep. great uh, great uh, team there. Um, they were wonderful to work with, talk to, ask questions. They were very very open. Um, I would say you know they were wonderful. Distilled was wonderful. Lucky game, uh, Lucky Duck Games was pretty amazing. We had some amazing. Um, vendors that we talked mm -hmm. to you met more than i did mm -hmm. so i mean i'm sure your list is quite a bit oh, yeah. longer I, than mine. they were all super helpful every one of them we met with and uh yeah i mean i feel for holt he wasn't able to be there for the convention he was at, at the dentistry convention <laughs> 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 poor guy but yeah i mean uh, they they were particularly helpful uh getting us information about their game because obviously it's in their best interest the game's up for sale on their channel on uh kit start it's their first one and so it's their first i'm, one. I'm but super yeah, excited we, for them we i am too and uh they gave us t-shirts too uh, yeah. i'm not sure where they are right now i would have been wearing that one probably otherwise. Uh, yeah they're it's their purple and they're pretty and i'm so excited <laughs> they they did the right color choice. um all right so my number one that i'm super excited about okay, i guess no because you already know uh, i said you my list beforehand and i shouldn't have done it had i known um so it is done by dead and alive games called lunar rush we got to demo this and guys it was so exciting because I love games with time timing. Um, and so you basically are a company and you're sending resources to the moon and you're building, you're establishing your space base there where you're trying to mine and ore special minerals that are only on the moon that you're shipping back to earth. And you can either send them um, raw or you can send them processed. Obviously processed is worth more. Um, and so, but you've got to get stuff shipped in and you got to ship stuff out but everyone's fighting over um, either the slow, um, medium, or fast routes. Um, and so I loved it because you had, obviously, economic. You had, you're building your star base, so you've got that engine building thing going on. Um, you and could upgrade your manufacturing components. Yeah, you could. I, That was my favorite part. Yeah, you got to, you got to up, basically upgrade your board with the different, um, adding things to do and whatever. Um, and then bringing, managing when your resources come in, how to develop those and send stuff out. Um, so and, there was and it a had, lot of cool stuff. It had the price board that changed values based upon sales. So it which went is up and down, which yes. you also like. Now I will say, we only had 30 minutes to demo the game. We played three rounds and he's like, oh, I'm going to skip to the end. And I was like, but why? <laughs> I was like, can't we just finish this in 30 minutes? I'm fast. But I forgot I was playing with Randy. Oh yeah, it's all we, my fault. You were slow. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Little, a bit. Um, so no, but um, we we kind of then we went towards maybe towards the end um, to see you know um, so I'm just, I'm really excited about this game because it's got all my things and it's going to be coming up in kick to Kickstarter um, in the next couple of months yeah. so that's another one they had two releases coming out Omicron Protocol and Lunar Rush. And whenever I uh, spoke with them before going up there, they were like, you know, sign up for a demo. And Omicron Protocol is a miniatures game, so it was not really the kind of game we typically play. It looked fine, but it just wasn't our kind of game usual, usually. But when I saw Lunar Rush, I was like, well, this has got manufacturing. It's got all the things you spoke of. I was like, this, this one might be right up our alley. So I it signed was. up for a demo for that. And I chose wisely. Yes, you, you chose wisely. So, um, no, I think um, overall we've got a lot of good stuff coming to the market in the next couple of months. Um, I overall was, there were so many games that I was super excited to hear about and learn about by all the different um, publishers and game makers. It was exciting. I We got to talk to a lot of actual um, board creators, which was a lot of fun, especially some of the newer ones because they were so excited. And you could definitely see the love of this industry. And that's something amazing. Um, it's something that to be able to share that love with somebody else, especially, um, you know, it's fantastic. And at these cons, you really get to experience that because I know sometimes um, it, we don't necessarily get to play as games, as games as much as we want to play or meet as many people that have the same love for us. So these cons allow that to happen. And it was just beautiful. We had a fantastic time at Origins. So it was our first time being behind the scenes, kind of. It was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It was like getting to walk 
behind you know behind the curtain and he see what's coming and down the pipe you know usually i mean i can still all these games are listed on board game geek so it's not like you can't find out that they're coming uh, but you to get you know, the inside track from the people who are well and you get a game. better feel for the game as yeah. they explain it to you because it's sometimes it's really hard to connect with you know just a screen and so getting that one-on-one -on -one content to be able to you know, go through that information and find, oh, this one, you know, mm -hmm. this one sounds like something that's right up my alley. So, again, I think I'm super excited for a lot of the connections that we made. I'm super excited about a lot of the games that we, you know, discovered and learned about. And I'm ex it's it's been a f fantastic go around. And I, I'm hoping that or uh, Gen Con can be just as amazing, um, if not better. Um, but, yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, so there were a couple of games that we got to fully play, but they weren't compared to the demos we played. We played, um, Chai Tea for Two. We played Trailblazers. We played, um, the Dinosaur Rolling Right. Yeah. And Dinosaur I, I, Rolling Right. I play, stayed up and played with some of our other friends up there, a, um, another game but i can't recall the name yeah. of it because it was half asleep when we were, i was playing it yeah and then the other one we got to um i got to play great western trail because it's my favorites <laughs> um and then um there was a game that we could have played fully <laughs> we decided not to play it fully um there could have been other things of greater value for mm -hmm. our time um I'm not going to say the name, but it involves four humors. <laughs> so if you really want to know about our interesting experience, we'll tell you on the DM because you don't want to be that people, but we will let you know. Um, but no, overall, I had a blast. Super excited we got to do it. I'm, like you said, I love seeing Behind the Veil. It's been fantastic. So, well... Hopefully, you guys, you've enjoyed this one. Let us know what you're super excited to see. Um, is there something that maybe you thought should have been on this list for the next coming six months? Um, we'll catch you guys later. All right. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Today... Sorry, there's two birds getting there. Freak on. Okay. <laughs> It's distracting. All right. There so, go. Randy, what is your number one? I'm pretty sure everyone on this video or watching this video right now knows what my number one is. Oh, can I guess? Can I guess? Can I guess? BE 100. Wait, 411. What is it? <laughs> You're guessing, but you don't. Even... What's the name of it? I know the booth. And 44 we pretty... BCE. Okay. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm gonna put this one in there. Your guess is B E. B. What?